All right, so I'm here just in time to start filming as the roosters are at their usual crap. Speaking of crap, it is time to roast the Christmas movie. Of course, I wrote my notes on my phone, which is what I'm recording this on, so actually not too much to shut up. Oh my God, these roosters. And my nails are just, I did them like two days ago, destroyed, because we're about to move, so I've been cleaning some stuff. Okay, so not much to roast today. I watched Four Christmases yesterday, which as I mentioned in the previous video is on both the best and worst Christmas movie list. So I think that pretty much sums the movie up. I mean, I certainly wouldn't call it the best, but it's definitely not the worst. It stars Reese Witherspoon and Vince Vaughn, who I quite enjoy as actors. Um, it is quite corny though, very cliche. It did make me laugh out loud a couple times, but it was cute, you know. And there was a bit of raunchiness, wholesomeness, like it was just kind of a mix of everything. So I'm gonna say that the night before Christmas at that point still definitely topped the list of worst movie ever. So then today I was trying to pick the next movie and I went on Amazon Prime and I chose Christmas at Graceland. So I knew this one would be a bit of a roll of a dice because I am a huge Elvis fan and this morning I'd been listening to Elvis's Christmas album. So I was like, I don't know if I wanna play with fire here. But I decided to anyways, because after all, it is the Christmas movies roasting on a open fire series. Welcome. So it stars Kelly Pickler and then literally a bunch of random people. I have no idea who any of them are. Blanket overall, Kelly Pickler is not a good actress. She's, she's awful. And I, I, I'm gathering that a part of this whole Christmas movie Hallmark thing is to just smile. Smile the whole time. And that's all they get you to do in your audition because then when it comes time to actually do some real acting, they can't do it. Like Kelly Pickler was fine when she was happy, not stressed, gleeful, making doe eyes at her lover. Any other time, it was just not good. It was not a good situation. And she really just smiled too much. Like I'm sure her face hurt. Like I get the impression that she's a pretty jovial person in general, just based on what I've seen on American Idol, but this was a lot. It was a lot of smiling which is the only thing that I would honestly say put it near the night before Christmas because overall it was a lot better. There was no time travel, thank goodness. Uh, the love interest was good looking, so that was a good bonus. I know I sound shallow when I say these things, but I just can't be attracted to a Robert Pattinson lookalike in a romantic Christmas movie. Um, but yeah, this one had all of the, the corn and cliches and just way too many smiles that any Hallmark movie would have, which I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but it is actually a Hallmark Channel movie. So we got into the legit Hallmark stuff today. Basically, uh, to sum it up, it's this, this lady has moved to Chicago after growing up in Memphis and works for a bank. She's been sent to Memphis right near Christmas time to try to get this bank to partner with her bank. And it's very predictable, you know within the first 10 minutes of the movie, and spoiler alert, if anyone out there is really not wanting this gem of a movie to be spoiled, don't watch any further. In the first 10 minutes, you know for a fact that she's going to fall in love with her little college friend who she used to sing with all the time. She's gonna move back to Memphis, and she's gonna marry the college friend, and she's gonna start working for this bank that she's trying to get to move with her bank. She's just gonna abandon that bank because the boss is mean and uh, join this bank and come back to her roots in Memphis. Another really great thing was they did not butcher any Elvis songs. They played some Elvis songs in the background, which was nice. I was kind of worried they would really overdo the whole Elvis thing, but it was tasteful and decent. And except for the part where they broke into Graceland, her and her little lover, and they started playing Elvis's piano. And I was like, how dare you? You do not. I don't care if you're Kelly Pickler. Mm -mm. I know it's like a set and whatever, but it's just the principle of it. I was like, no, you don't have your little date night there. Um, so yeah, super corny throughout the whole movie. She is making doe eyes at this friend of hers from high school. And everyone is like, they've all kind of secretly agreed to be her wingmen, it seems, because every time they end up seeing each other, someone's like, oh, I'll take your daughter over here. And oh, I'll take whoever over here. And oh, I'll do, like, everyone's just taking her daughter away so that she can like, get this romance going and I'm like, okay, this girl is seven and she's only here for a week. So we probably don't need to be leading on the daughter 
to think she's gonna have this stepdad or something because her dad's not in the picture. It's one of those ones. So anyways, that happened throughout the movie. And then I actually didn't like fully get heartburn until 52 minutes in. I think it was like 52 minutes, 22 seconds when the guy convinces Kelly Pickler to come Christmas caroling with him. And they do this scene where they carol at this house and like the whole thing just, it made my skin crawl. It was, <gasps> and Kelly Pickler and this dude, wonderful singers. Their voices sound really nice together too. Like that was definitely a redeeming quality of this movie was the fact that they are both great singers and Kelly Pickler is so talented when it comes to singing, but she should stick to just singing because that was the extent of it. Yeah, this, this, this caroling scene was just not, not good. Um, what was the other thing I was gonna mention? Oh yeah, <laughs> so she goes to a meeting with the guy whose bank they're trying to partner with and she's at this conference table with a bunch of these bank people and then her boss is up on the screen for this video conference while they're trying to negotiate deals and this, this guy that she's trying to convince is very hesitant about the whole thing and then her boss is like really mean so he's just like berating them and being like, well, we can't do this and that and trying to negotiate and whatever else happens in business. I don't, I don't do business. I work in childcare and now I don't work at all. So not my cup of tea. But anyway, she gets this text from her friend and it's a picture of the dude that she's infatuated with from college. And she just looks down at her phone and she's like, and she actually laughs out loud in this meeting at this picture, which is of him getting hit by a snowball. And it's not funny at all. And then her boss is like, can you go over the tax stuff for next year? And she's like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like that's Kelly Pickler acting for you. Um, and then the other part that really ground my gears was the, so the part of the whole storyline, like I'm not even gonna get into it because it wasn't that good or bad and it's not that worth roasting, but the whole thing was like, she on the side, of when she's supposed to be doing this work trip and she promised her boss 100% of her free time would be dedicated to this project, which it wasn't. She was off ice skating, going to parties, making doe eyes at her lover. Um, then she signs up to do this concert with him because one of his acts fell out. So they're like, oh, let's relive the good old days and do a concert together. So they do, or she agrees to, but then her boss is like, no, you have to come home. You've been having too much fun and I saw you singing online. So get your butt back here because you're clearly not gonna close this deal. I don't blame the guy, honestly. Again, I'm not a business person, but she'd been farting around for so long. I'm like, yeah, get her out of there. Her head's not in the game. Send someone else, send a dude, like whatever. Anyways, um, so then she, as she's on the way to the airport and her daughter's all sad leaving her stepdad and all her friends that she made over the course of this week, they're in the car, they're sad. And then Kelly Pickler's like, no, we're going to this Christmas concert. She rolls up in her full outfit, her full makeup done. She hasn't given, what's his name, Clay? She hasn't given Clay a heads up that they're gonna come and do the concert. So he's like, you would assume as a concert manager, whatever he does, that he would have already, you know, made prior arrangements to, oh, there's a dust. Um, yeah, you'd think he'd have this, you know, sorted out. He's got the concert scheduled, whatever. I don't know anything about the music business either. So, uh, but no, she rolls up, surprises him just as the concert's about to end. And she's like, let's do this one last time. Just, just for old time's sake. Conveniently, even though they haven't rehearsed once, they sang once outside the hotel together and once like one other time at Graceland or something, uh, they had this whole performance worked out and they knew when to sing and the tune and the melody and the key and whatever. It was very convenient. And then, oh, he wanted to do a little, a little uh, encore. And conveniently, he had all these backup singers ready for this encore. And they all knew when to sing and what they were gonna sing. And so did Kelly Pickler and so did Clay. It was magical. It was a true Christmas miracle. So anyways, after that, it is as we predicted in the beginning, the banker guy from Memphis is like, I would love you to run this branch, but you know, it might be a bit of a pay cut compared to what they pay you in Chicago. And she's like, I'll take it. And she like picked a house out across the street from her friend. It was just, it was, yeah. I honestly, I think because I went in with it thinking it was gonna be terrible, it ended up being a lot better than I expected, but it was still very cliche, way too much smiling, way too corny, not great. But as it stands, the Night Before Christmas is still the front runner for the worst Christmas movie I've ever seen. So we'll see what tomorrow brings, but uh, that's where we're at now. The end. Thanks for coming.